Hi. I hate it when people ask a question by making a statement, but I'll make one, uh, which is, uh, this is one of the pieces that brought all the money and people here. There was that question earlier about how did the culture of Lockheed relate to the later culture of uh, uh, the commercial world. I, I remember all the ICs were bought by, uh, the, through defense contracts. And um, I remember that uh, uh, whenever I went looking for engineers, one of the places I looked were the hand club at, at Lockheed. So it, you know, it, had a, it had a bigger picture than, than the internal picture that, that you very well represented. But I was curious, what, uh, just an idea of the total dollar volume that passed through Lockheed uh, in the period you've talked about, you know, maybe the, the 20 or 30 or 40 years, which would give an idea of the contribution it made to the local economy. And I, I don't know a number, but maybe you do. Well, we had a lot of people working there. I mean, you could take all their salaries and multiply that out, but I don't think that gets you even close. Yeah. Those are those are expensive programs, uh, high value hardware. Right. So I, I think at our peak, we, we got to something like 30,000, 33,000 people out there in the, in the parking lot. Uh, and that's just, that's a small city right there. Yeah, I think the, uh, Steve Blank came up with the concept of uh, you know, a startup with nuclear weapons, it was a bad concept. But I think he talks about 35,000 people peak in 65 from zero, and then gradually declining. And, and uh, uh, Cliff is right, uh, in that type of industry, the, uh, the spins were running out of time. So the labor cost is a small fraction, so if you add in the materials cost, it, it's hundreds of billions of dollars, an enormous amount. We have more, over $500 million, I know at least, uh, coming out of here, and the, the Lockheed missiles, the space company was providing most of the profit for the entire corporation for a number of years during the 70s. You're talking about profit, not... Also, also just the income, both, both. 500 million? In 1975 dollars or whatever they were, uh, I was talking. Yeah, I wasn't talking profit of five hundred billion. I was talking about uh, total. Total. Yeah. For what it's worth, uh, not nobody, none of us who were working on the on the Polaris program or the Poseidon or Trident programs ever wanted any chance that those systems would be used. From the Admiral. The first admiral on down to the end, we believed what we were doing was making damn sure that they would never be used in anger, because if they did, we had failed. And if you look at in that program, it we tested throughout the program, and those will get to that cost question a little bit. Uh, approximately six missiles every year operational tests fired by the crews that man the submarines every year since 1960 to today okay so the, the each of the development programs in in like 1970 dollars was probably between two and three billion dollars uh, over maybe a five year life uh, span of development then you add to that the production, which typically went on for 10 years or more, and you get a sense for the, the actual numbers. Uh, but the FBM program is by far the most profitable program for the Lockheed Corporation in its history, and for the Lockheed Martin Corporation in their combined histories. As a, you know, uh, legacy organizations before they merge. 